In this tutorial, we're going to show how VCarve Pro or Aspire can be used to engrave multiple badges from data imported from a spreadsheet file such as a CSV file. We're going to show how to set up a, a master badge template. The template file will include a number of variables. So here we're going to set up two different variables, one for the individual's name and one for the department that they work in. Once we've set the master template up, we're then going to show how to use the plate production tool to import a CSV file. This is essentially the, the list of, of the data that we wish to engrave on each badge and then show how to assign the different variables in the, in the CSV file with the variables on, the, on each of the badges. Once we've done that, we can then use the software to automatically create the toolpaths for engraving all of the badges in the file. So if we say calculate, the software will then automatically create all of the different badge layouts for us. And most importantly, it's automatically going to create the each of the toolpaths to engrave the badges onto the, the sheet of material for us. So if we start by closing this file for a moment, so file close. We don't want to save the changes. We're going to create a new file. In this example, we're going to use a sheet of plexiglass that's 12 inches by 8 inches, eighth of an inch thick. We want the XY origin to be bottom left hand corner and the Z origin to be on the material surface. Click OK. I'm going to start by drawing off our master template. This is essentially the badge that we want, uh, that we want to engrave onto. So I've just clicked and dragged a rectangle. We can specify the exact sizes of this. So let's make it two and a half inches by two inches high and apply. Let's say we want little radius, radius corners. So quarter of an inch radius on each corner. So we've got a two and a half inch by two inch uh, master template badge and close the form. So we're going to engrave details of each of the people maybe attending an exhibition or a conference at a hotel inside this master badge. Before we do that, I'm just going to import a, a logo. So I'm going to say import. Let's say that the conference is for Volkswagen or the, the local garage. So I'm going to click, select the badge. This is the, this is the company information that we, we want on the top of each of the different badges. So I'm just going to position that using the cursor in the top, along the top of the badge. Next, I want the text that we import to automatically fit inside the selected area for each badge. So to do that, we're going to use the option to draw text with inside a selected vector or boundary. So we're going to click and the key to this is we need to start and end the, the data here or the text string with the exclamation marks or two of them. So or sometimes called the shriek. So normally this is the it's the um, it's the number one key with the shift being pressed. So top left hand corner of the keypad, hold the shift key down and press the one twice and you get the exclamation marks. So we want two of those. Then I'm going to say, OK, we want this variable to be called name and it could be any. The variable can have any name and then we're going to end it with two exclamation marks or shrieks as well. We're going to select the font that we want this to be. So let's say we're going to use a uh, a three line Helvetica for the person's name and click apply. Okay, that's automatically been fitted into our badge there. Next, if we select the rectangle again, I'm going to use this time, I'm going to use a slightly different font or a text option. So we're going to say draw this text. So we could draw it to a specific height or size, or again, we could say force the text to fit inside the selected rectangle. So let's say force to fit or draw to fit shriek shriek and we'll call this department and end with shriek shriek. Select the font again. So this time instead of being a, a three line font, we'll use a, a single line Helvetica and apply. Now that font has been drawn underneath. So we're just going to drag that down to the bottom for a moment. Like so. Okay, so we've we've now created our badge and it doesn't mean very much at the moment, but what we're going to do inside, I'm just going to nudge that up slightly inside the software. 
we can calculate different toolpaths for the variables and to actually cut the badge out. So to do that, we swap from the drawing tab on the left to the toolpath tab on the right hand side of the, of the interface. We're going to use the, the quick engrave functionality. So quick engrave toolpath. Let's start by engraving the logo in the header of the, each badge. We're going to use a, let's say we're going to use an engraving toolpath. Let's say we're going to use a 20 degree with a quite a sharp pointed cutter. Let's say we want a pressure of 20 thousandths. We're going to fill inside the selected vectors there. And let's say we want the step over to be 20 thousandths, cutting at 45 degrees. If we calculate this toolpath, if we zoom in, you'll see there that we're going to scratch the surface, um, just scratching the surface of the material for the badge. If we look in the three-dimensional view, you'll see that's the, the pattern that we're going to engrave onto the top of the badge. Go back to the 2D view. Close the quick engrave form for a moment. Next, we're going to engrave the variable. So again, we're going to use quick engrave. So quick engrave, we'll use the same cutter. We're going to quick engrave with the tip of the cutter running on the lines for the selected vectors. And we'll do the same for both of the, the variables, so name and departments. Now, if we say calculate, now the software is telling me that because I've got fill selected and we're using open vectors, this isn't possible. So I'm just going to say cancel and change this to be outline. So the tip of the cutter runs on the lines there. Now, if we say calculate, you'll see that the cutter is running around on top of each vector. If we look in the three dimensional view, close the quick engrave form. You'll see there that we've got the toolpaths for the company logo and the variables. If you go back to the two-dimensional view, let's finally cal calculate a toolpath to cut the badges out. So to do that, we're going to say profile machine. We're going to go around the outside. We'll use the same cutter, cutting all the way through the material. But we need to add some little tabs to hold these in place. Otherwise, they're going to fly off the machine. So let's say add some tabs. Add tabs. Let's say we want a tab on each side. So click left mouse button and we'll make the tabs quarter of an inch long and 60 thousandths thick. So calculate the toolpath. So now we've got three toolpaths. If we preview all of these toolpaths, you'll see we get the logo, the engraved detail, and we get a toolpath that's going to run around and profile machine each of the badges out. If we go back to the design view, Close the toolpath form and swap back to the drawing tab on the left hand side of the screen. If we click and drag to select our master template, we can now open the plate production form. In here, it tells us the size of the material we're using 12 by 8. The size of each badge is 2.5 by 2 inches. And we can tell it how big a gap we want around the edge of the, the badges. So let's say 0.2 of an inch. And the gap between badges in X and Y. The software then tells us how many badges it can machine out of this 12 by 8 plate. We'll look, look at this option in the bottom left hand corner in a, in a few moments. Next we look at importing the list of data that we wish to engrave on each badge. So effectively the list of names of the people that we wish to engrave badges for. We're going to use what's called a CSV file or a comma separated file. So import the file. Just before we import the file, let's take a look at what this sort of file looks like. So here we've got a, a very simple Excel spreadsheet file that's got a list of people's names, their surname, the department, etc. And we can use Excel to save this as a CSV file, comma separated file. Go back to the software for a moment. Import. This is our CSV file. We get the the first row in the in the file is the is the the uh, section headings so the people's first name person's first name surname the department etc and this, we can tell in the software that we want we don't want a badge engraved with that first row of data that's just the headings for the columns so we're going to say first row is the is the column names we can now assign the variable so here remember in our template we've got the variable for names 
and a variable for department. So for name, we're going to assign that to the, the person's first name. And for the departments, we can assign that to the list of data in the file for departments. Okay. Now, if we uncheck this option, the software will, will automatically, well, if we just do it, let me show you, say calculate and close. What you will see now is that in the two dimensional view, the software has created all of the vector information for the, for the plates or the badges that can be engraved out of this sheet of material. But that is only half the challenge because the real challenge is calculating the toolpaths for each one as well. So if we say control Z, select the data again, go back to plate production. If we switch on the option to say create the toolpaths as well, because we created the master toolpaths for the template and now say calculate, close the form. What we've now got in the three dimensional view, if we swap to the toolpath tab, preview the toolpath so reset the, the preview we've now got all of the toolpaths for the, each of the badges so here we've got for sheet one we've got the engraving toolpaths for the names we've got the engraving toolpaths for the company logo and we've got sheet one the profile toolpath for cutting the badges out now for sheet one all of the toolpaths are being drawn automatically so they're visible so on the preview form we can say preview visible toolpaths. So this shows us what the software is going to engrave for the sh first sheet of material. It's going to give us 12 badges. So we've got four along the bottom by three up each side. So we've got e each person's name. We've got the department that they work in. And this is all being engraved out of the first sheet of material. We will then change the, the sheet of material. So we change the material for a new sheet of material. And then we would engrave sheet two, the toolpaths for sheet two. So in this case, we've got an, an extra two badges that would be engraved out of the second sheet of material. If we go back to the design view, so open the two dimensional view, here we've got all of the, the vector data or the badge data for sheet one. If we go to the layer management, layer control form, we can say switch off sheet one, switch on sheet two, and that's the geometry for sheet two. So the software using the plate production tool has automatically, if I just say control Z, we select the badge, the master template badge again. Remember the variables are specified with these shriek or exclamation mark, two at the beginning and two at the end. And then the software has then allowed us to so assign each of the variables. So variable name has been assigned to the person's first name. We could have changed this to be the person's surname. So if we say, okay, we want that to be their surname, that's just not, we're not going to calculate the toolpaths for a moment. If I say calculate again and close, what that's done is it's changed the, the badge for each person for each person, and we've now got their surnames in the department. So very quick and easy to experiment by changing the variable settings and assigning the variable to different different sets of data from our, our list or our CSV file. Once we're happy with the toolpaths, we'd literally, as always, we just select each of the each of the toolpaths in turn, select the machine that we're going to engrave with and send the data to the machine. Let's just say control Z for a moment. Let's put let's put this badge back. So I'm just going to select, go to plate production and I'm going to select name, assign this back to the their first name, calculate the toolpaths, swap to the toolpath tab. Here we've got the toolpaths for sheet one, and we could say save toolpaths. Now because sheet one, they're all using the same toolpath, we could say output them all, all the visible toolpaths in one go. So S1 for ing quick engrave, quick engrave, profile cut they can all be sent to the machine as a single toolpath form if you're running one of the engraving machines that has the option to output direct to the machine so for example the Roland engravers so the Roland EGX 300 for example this has the option to send the data straight to the CNC control without saving an intermediate file so we can say output to the machine select the, the machine driver by clicking on the configuration button 
and we can send the data straight to the engraver. Thank you for listening to this tutorial.